In this lecture, we will discuss about parasitic capacitance. The definition of parasitic capacitance is the unwanted or unintentional capacitance that exists between two conductive structures that are separated by an insulator. As shown in the previous lectures, this is a simple illustration of a capacitor with two plates. You can see the definition of capacitance C equals to epsilon times A, which is the area, over D. D is the distance between the two plates, epsilon is the permittivity. Whether you like it or not, parasitic capacitance can be found everywhere in the electrical systems. As a design engineer, you must know how to deal with it. It all depends on your operating frequency and the specific design requirements and the specs. In this lecture, I will show you a few examples about parasitic capacitance. First, let's talk about the printed circuit board or PCB capacitance. Here is a reference from Analog Engineer's Pocket reference from Texas Instruments. On the left-hand side, we have an illustration of PCB parallel plate capacitance, which is defined in this equation. The capacitance in picofarad PF is defined as K times L times W times epsilon sub R over H. Here is the definition of each parameter. On the right-hand side, we have an example using two different units. The first example is using the length in millimeters, or mm. The second example, the length is in mil, or one thousandth of an inch, which is very popular in the USA. Both examples have the same lines in different units, and therefore have the same capacitance as the result. Now let's take a close look at this example. The length L is 5.08 mm, W is 12.7 mm, H, the distance is, is 1.575 mm, epsilon sub R for FR4 material is 4.5. Now, we can use this equation to get the parasitic capacitance about 1.63 picofarad, which is very small. Here is another illustration about PCB trace capacitance. You can see between traces and the between a trace and the polygon on the top layer can create stray capacitance or parasitic capacitance. Furthermore, in between the top layer and the bottom layer, since we have a bottom big polygon, we also have the parasitic capacitance in between. This is another example about the traces on the same layer. On the top layer, we have traces in parallel that can be quite near to each other. If they are close, we can have high capacitance between traces, as circled here. If they are more separated, we will have low capacitance in between traces. In addition, we will have parasitic capacitance in between trees and the bottom polygons. This is another example about interwinding parasitic capacitance in a transformer or an inductor. Here, the structure of a transformer is given for illustration purposes. We can see the windings for primary and secondary are wound over the bobbing, and usually we can have parasitic capacitance in between each winding. For example, if we have primary side winding and secondary side winding from this transformer, this schematic shows an equivalent transformer circuit including parasitic capacitance, such as input capacitance CP, interwinding capacitance CW, and the output capacitance or secondary winding capacitance CS. So on the right-hand side, this is an illustration for measurement of interwinding capacitance CW. To measure the interwinding capacitance, first, the primary side are shorted together and the secondary side are shorted together. If we measure the primary to secondary capacitance, the measured value equals to the interwinding capacitance. Here is another example about parasitic capacitance in semiconductor devices, such as N-channel MOSFET. In this case, we have the parasitic capacitance in between gate and source, CGS, between gate and drain, CGD, and the drain and the source, CDS. So from the datasheet, we can often find the input capacitance, output capacitance, and the reverse transfer capacitance as CISS, COSS, and CRSS. 
By using the equation, we can simply find the CGD, CGS, and CDS. Oftentimes, parasitic capacitance plays a critical role in a switch mode power supply design. In this case, we have the parasitic capacitance in between windings and in between the MOSFET drain and heat sink and in between the doubt and the heat sink. So since the parasitic capacitance between the heat sink has a high DVDT slew rate or high voltage slew rate, the common mode noise can be generated by this DVDT through the parasitic capacitance. So common mode current noise I equals to C sub P times DVDT. So the high DVDT couples to the capacitance and goes back to the source, which create the common mode noise. When you are designing a switch mode power supply, you must pay attention to this common mode noise created by the high DVDT over parasitic capacitance. Recap. Parasitic capacitance exists almost everywhere in the circuit. A few examples are given in this lecture. As an engineer, we should always be aware of it and know how to deal with it. When you are working at high frequency, especially for the switch mode power supply or high-speed circuits, you must pay attention to the voltage slew rate, dV over dt, and the parasitic capacitance in the design. A few examples are given in this lecture, including the PCB, transformers or inductors, MOSFETs, and switch mode power supplies. Thank you and see you next time.